when you use the term Celt, people hear lots of different things. Yes. Uh, and it's very difficult to say, I actually don't mean the traditional view of all of these people thought they were Celts, and they actually all had the same social structure, because I admit they didn't. And some of them used Latin art, some of them did. If you start still calling them Celts, then everybody starts to hear, oh, they did have Druids, and they did have Latin art, uh -huh. and you, you end up simply back where you were with this one-size-fits-all model, which what that tended to assume was all these people were simply at best minor variations on the theme mm. of Celticness. Whereas what the archaeology at least seems to be showing is no, they weren't. What they were are lots and lots of different people who are to some extent tending to converge in certain limited respects, uh, in the, at least in the material culture. Right. Family resemblances. Family resemblances, yeah. And again, I mean, other parallels you might bring in here, which I think better match at least the material culture. There are, for example, the, the, the culture of Europe during the, the, the period of, of chivalry and troubadour culture, when you had the same kind of clothing mm. and the same kind of weapons and jewellery and, to some extent, literature across the whole of Europe, from Catalonia to the south of France, all the way up to, to Scotland and, and to Ireland and up to Scandinavia. But those people were not all the same mm. ethnically. What for you is the smoking gun culturally? for recognising the presence of a Celtic people group? I don't think you can, because I don't... I think it is such a, a, a modern construct that I tend not to use the term uh, at all, even actually of continental peoples. I would more like to, turn, to speak of Gauls, except where you have to, like people like the Celtiberians who have no other name, and they do yeah. seem to have called themselves that. So it would be more helpful just to avoid the, the language of Celtic Generally Altogether. speaking, yes, and a lot of uh, British archaeologists in particular yeah. really don't use it anymore. Or if they do, you know, it's always got scare quotes around it. I, again, this is bringing me back to my first point, because if, if, the, if Celtic is, prob is so difficult to place and it is, is so porous that it's, it's better to avoid the language altogether, then, then it seems that the, the Irish and other Islander Celts mm -hmm have the same problem as every other Celtic group in terms of making a, a name for themselves as Celts. Why do we need to call them Celts at well, all? Why not we, call them Celts? Well, why, actually, why call them any one particular name? Uh, I mean, my... my because, because there are certain family traits which mm -hmm. stretch across these clearly diverse people groups, but they have these family traits. Well, I don't think Which is do, worth recognising. Well, apart it? from the languages which we have decided to call Celtic, uh, other than that, it's difficult to see what those traits might be. As I say, for most of the Iron Age, these people don't actually, many of these people don't have what we call Latin art or any other material trait you can see in common. They don't have the same settlement types, they don't have the same burial rites, they don't have the same religion. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're rapidly sort of crossing off all of these supposed family traits. It's just like modern Europeans, isn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. But we still have a use for the term European. We do have the use of the term European, unless perhaps you are a, a, a Eurosceptic. But again, that means, what does that mean? <laughs> They're using the yeah. word European in the Euroscepticism. Well, that's true, yeah. absolutely. Uh, but we, we talk about ancient Europe. I mean, well, one of the reasons I think it might actually not be helpful to even use terms like uh, ancient Britons or ancient Irish is again, those are suggesting there is a useful entity to be described here, which there might be. I think that needs to be established. If, Obviously, my, my awareness is, is much greater of the Iron Age of, of, of Britain. But that itself is so incredibly diverse mm. that uh, you can't generalise about the Iron Age of Britain, really hardly at all. What's going on in a, what's now Atlantic Scotland is so utterly different from what's going on in southeastern England that really, uh, I think, if you were to ask or pin a lot of Iron Age archaeologists thoughts, say, what are you going to call these people? We say, the people's plural of Iron Age Britain. And we've always been multiple peoples in Britain. Mm right the way down to, to the present. Uh, and the idea that everybody's British uh, is something, as I say, that really starts with, more or less with James VI and first, uh, uh, and then the Union of 1707, and it looks like it's coming unraveled again. We are a diverse group of peoples who happen to share an island. Uh, these diverse groups of peoples on both islands that we would call the Atlantic Islands today, what did they share in common? What was similar amongst them? Not an awful lot, I think, across all of them. I mean, there are some interesting um, things which do seem to spread a a across the Isles and to be largely confined to the Isles. For example, circular timber architecture mm. for a lot of these periods. But beyond that, uh, similar languages, uh, that's about it, really, as far as we know. Religion? Um, well, religious traditions? In the Iron Age. Yeah, burial sites? There are... 
burial traditions are incredibly varied. Uh, a, a lot they of still Britain, are. Indeed. But, I mean, <laughs> we have this, this notion of uh, how do you identify continental Celts? So-called flat inhumation cemeteries. How many flat inhumation cemeteries are there in Britain or Ireland? You know, they're, they're, they really aren't there. Uh, we do get some... Uh, it, what, the exception that kind of proves the rule is that in the very late Iron Age, in southeastern Britain, you get continental-style cremation rites come in. But that kind of shows up the fact that for most of the rest of the British Iron Age, what you've got is the tradition of the disappearing dead. We don't know what's happened to most of the dead. They're probably burying people up trees and things like this. The bodies just go. Hmm. Uh, and that is actually a tradition which comes through from the Bronze Age. But again, it's not everywhere. Because in East, East Yorkshire, you do have some cemeteries uh, with a, a peculiar local burial rite, like, like, like we saw with the, 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 yeah. the chariot burials, which kind of has some connections with the continent. So diversity is the watchword. We used to look for commonalities. Now what we've, we recognise really is, is that it's characterised by regional diversity. And what about personality types? Uh, that gets very difficult. How do you get at that uh, through archaeological evidence? Mm. I think what, obviously, archaeological evidence is, is limited. Yeah. But I think one of the reasons it's important is it's just about our only direct testimony from those people themselves, as opposed to secondhand testimony about them by Greeks and Romans, extrapolating backwards from later languages, mm. extrapolating backwards from modern genetic evidence. These are all clues, but the actual stuff which is the, the direct traces of these people are things like the sites and the monuments and the pots and the houses. And when people say today that we can look at personality types mm. in, our com in our current experience and read backwards and say, well, I mean, this is what we share with these Celtic peoples, a certain temperament, a certain anti-institutionalism, a certain yes, democracy, perhaps. perhaps. Yeah, you know, um, I, I'm rather what do you make of that argument? I'm rather sceptical about that, how far you can, can actually define that. Um, I mean, you know, here I am, a tall, blonde Englishman, uh, not, not corresponding to a, a Celtic stereotype. Right, right. Or am I? Because we tend to think of, of, of people of my kind of bodily form have turned up with the Vikings or the well, Anglo-Saxons exactly, yeah. in, into southern England. Mm. But if you read Roman sources and you look at the, the types they mention in Britain, they talk about, in, in the west of what's now Wales, small, dark people. Fits with the Welsh. You go up to Caledonia, red-headed Caledonians, fits with the Scots. And what have you got in Iron Age southern Britain? You've got tall, blonde people who are already there in the Iron Age. Um, so what, you know, what actually is a physical or a, 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 you know, a cultural type or a personality type? Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you can easily map these things uh, onto history like that. 